Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's, well, Thursday is the 4th of, this, of January. Can you imagine? We're already in the 4th of January. <laughs> I was about to say 2023. The 4th of January 2024. And if you're just joining us for the first time here, well, Happy New Year to you still. I think I'm going to be saying Happy New Year all of January. Okay, yeah, at least, but at least first week is happy new year yeah but all of january also is good enough for happy new year yeah well, happy new year to you my happy name is nyangul agadi welcome my, to breakfast my name is roman paulson you're welcome we have a lot in store for you well we'll be looking at how to grow money right on trees money grow on trees well mm -hmm. we're going to see how we can do that today we'll also be looking at some top trending stories that cut our attention as well as reviewing the papers on the national dailies this morning so you can see it's a lot on this breakfast bulletin and i'm excited are you ready yeah yeah so everybody would be interested but the first question that people ask in nigeria is oh this first statement they make is that now who chop better full feet safe but you'll find <laughs> out that it is easier than you you thought it was and uh, you can save as low as five thousand naira and it really grows. Well, let me, let me not talk like the expert. He will be here uh, joining us to tell us how money grows on trees. But first of all, let's just go to uh, top trending. Before right. we enter the actual one that we have um, uh, down for our viewers today, mm -hmm. uh, I like the fact that uh, the governor of Lagos State arrested a, an army man who was riding his bike one way. And it mm. has caused a buzz on social media. Everybody's talking yes. about it and all that. Yeah, but what interested me was that, um, like I saw a, a tweet from Sheo Sani this morning. He was saying that a soldier was caught driving one way mm. and the, do the governor arrested him. Mm. And it has triggered a conversation around how our national life is. Are we mm. not driving on a one way? And <laughs> do we not need to be arrested and brought back to court? To, um, take the right course that we are supposed to. And I'm also asking, when everybody's talking about the fact that this arrest was a good one because he was riding one way, mm -hmm. is anybody talking about the fact that bikes are banned from yeah. Lagos roads? That's so another thing. Sometimes we want to find a solution to our problems, but we are not looking at the root cause of the problem. Our laws made for some people and not others. Why are we not talking about the fact that it is criminal in Lagos to ride a bike? Mm -hmm. That's one. Second, in that he was riding. Yeah. You, he disobeyed traffic laws, mm -hmm. and then even the vehicle that you're using to move around is actually illegal in Lagos State. I mean, I love the fact that they arrested him because it starts from the top. When they get to see that even a military person can be arrested when they flout, you know, the orders of the state, then that's good because now what that does is make sure that everyone sits up. A lot of people do this. You see people moving, even on the BRT lanes as well. Mm -hmm. You see people, fine, I understand maybe for like emergency services, maybe like, um, you know, you have like well, your, I your... understand if it's an ambulance. Yes, if an, exactly, that's about a to say. A real ambulance. Yes, not problem. just that, you're just, you know, because putting sirens the sirens there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you see people just moving about and saying, oh, because, you know, I have some backing or I have some protection, mm -hmm. I can definitely move one way. And that is wrong. You at the top should also obey the laws. Nobody's above the law right now in Nigeria. So I think it's a good way to go. Yeah, but someone who will not always be on the road. Uh, mm. because nobody effects this kind of arrest. It's the governor who has done this and maybe the only one who can do this. Mm. Uh, before you, you hear of uh, army and police fighting, army and last man yeah, fighting that and all happened. that, somebody might want to uh, enforce the law and others will think that you're inferior to me. How can mm. you tell me this? What to do. And these policemen and army men use these bikes for commercial purposes as well. Have you not seen? I've seen one. Yeah, he was carry literally people. carrying a passenger. Yeah, and I'm they like, carry passengers. Drop an Inigo. <laughs> and I'm in my no. in uniform. I don't know, so. Okay, let's move over to our top trending. Uh, the first one, it says, Recognized traditional worshippers, Adeleke tells federal government. Oshin State Governor Ademola Adeleke has advised the federal government to recognize traditional religion and apportion to its adherence responsibilities. The governor spoke on Wednesday at the government secretariat in Abere, venue of the New Year traditional prayer session organized by the Traditional Worshippers Association of Oshun State. At the prayer session, the 2024 New Year divine revelations of the Ifa Oracle were revealed. 
Adeleke, who was represented by at the event. And the event by his deputy, Kola Adewisi, charged the adherents to be committed to their religion. He also called on leaders of different faiths to tolerate one another in the interest of peace, adding that traditional religion had nothing to do with ritual killings or crime. Speaking in Yoruba, he said, if the federal government recognizes Islam and Christianity, nothing stops it from promoting traditional religion. According to Adewisi, the federal government should recognize practitioners and apportion to them responsibilities. He also pleaded for religious tolerance among people of different faiths, said it should start from among leaders of all faiths. The Oluwa of Iwo, Abdul Rashid Akombi, on Tuesday said royal fathers in the state were in support of Adeleke for a second term in office. This was as the governor declared that his administration had reported success in all areas where opposition party members did not give him a chance to succeed. Oluwa and Adeleke spoke in Oshogo at an inter-religious service held at the state secretariat at Bere to usher in the government and the state into the new year. So, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I, I want to hear what you want to say. Yeah, um, he was right when he said uh, traditional religion has nothing to do with <coughs> ritual, ritual and, and crime. All that, uh, because you find people who are uh, deviating from what is taught, even in Christianity and all that, and they do. Well, some people, their only prayer is for somebody to die, mm. kill them, kill them, die by fire, and mm -hmm. all that. So for that's them not them. what Jesus taught us. You find that in Islam as well, you find that in every religion. It doesn't make that religion a, a murderous religion. Mm. I support the fact that they should be recognized. I don't support the fact that they should promote traditional religion. Mm. I'm not sure support. I'm not in support of the fact that government should promote any religion. They should yes. recognize them, give them their rights, let them uh, let them flourish mm -hmm. the way they want to, and so long as it's within the ambits of the law, yeah. but not the government promoting it. And yes. in this way also, I feel it's totally wrong and a waste of resources for the government to be sponsoring people going on pilgrimage. Mm. It's a faith thing. God is everywhere. If you want to go on pilgrimage to Israel, uh, to, to Mecca, Mecca. Know, it should be your choice and your ability to do so. Mm. Otherwise, God can do worship any, anywhere. So yeah. you apportion a good number of, or a good amount of money in our budget for pilgrimage, to, uh, pilgrimage of people who can worship the same gods wherever they are, mm. I think it's a waste of resources. So yeah. government should recognize them. Let them go if you want. they want to go. Monitor them the way that you should be monitored, but don't spend money on them. Mm. I, I think it's a waste yeah, of resources. Yeah, I, I think as a government, we need to realize that we have to be independent of religion. The same way you have to be independent of tribe and ethnicity. Mm -hmm. You should be independent of religion because at the end of the day, you don't want to have a sect of people following you because they say, oh, you're Muslim or you're Christian or you're a traditional worshiper mm -hmm. or, oh, because you're evil, that's the reason why, you know, I, I would yeah. support your government. No, that shouldn't be it. And even as a people, we need to just, I, I think religion does a lot yeah. to us. Religion has kind of suppressed us for a long time. And you see people saying, oh, I can't be friends with you because you, you don't practice the same faith that I practice. And that should be wrong. For instance, my father is a Christian, my parents are pastors, but guess what? They, my father has a lot of Muslim friends. Those are the people like he calls friends. Do you understand? Even for me as well, going into uni, and I think that because I studied in the UK, you have a lot of people. You have people who are Muslims, Buddhists as well. Yeah. And then you're not going to say because you don't practice the same faith that I practice, that means I'm not going to be your friend now. Here is where it gets even more interesting. Are you going to say because you are a Muslim, I would not do business with you. I would not take your money. Yeah, or do you understand? Or you're saying, oh, okay, I need to use, for instance, I need to use a phone and I need data or I need a SIM card. Are you going to say the MD of so 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 telecommunications company is Muslim, so therefore or is Christian, so therefore because he doesn't practice the same faith that I do, I'm I would not go in. Do you understand? <laughs> so how do we pick and choose these things? Now, as you said, I do not I would not tell the government to promote traditional mm -hmm. you know worshiping. I mean, just stay out of it. Be independent of this. If you need to bring them into office, that's fine. Although people can be skeptical about this because they're like, you're a traditional worshiper. Hmm. I don't know if you put something on my seats today. You know, this kind of things. But I think that's where the sensitization comes in. Some people actually worship Ifa, and they even say it's in technology. 
that most times technology are made of numbers and ifa is made of numbers like i've researched this thing yeah well if, if, if you're from a, a rural community like i come from you know the potency of traditional worship and the the real essence of traditional worship whoever is a seer a diviner in the traditional religion does not soil his hands with blood mm. so but we've been led to think that traditional worship Maybe is it's about Nollywood. Killing, killing people and, it's, it's Nollywood yeah, can, yeah. Can I, can I, can I, <laughs> so that's the, that's the way even the whites that brought up religion they looked at a lot of the things that we were doing and they just say this one is fetish, this one is wrong, this one is uh, backwards, this mm. one is evil. And they just blanketed everything and said everything black is, is bad. Funny but enough, you know, talking about Nollywood, if you even watch, you know, these Nollywood movies, you see that the people who actually sold their hands with blood, they get repercussion for, yes. they, they, get, they act to dance to the music, they face the consequences, right? So regardless, I mean, like we said, the government should be independent of that and make sure that you know they every, just stay out every of Every religion should be respected. Yes. Christianity, Islam, traditional religion, those are the three major ones. Mm -hmm. And recognize them. I, I support that. But don't go promoting them right. and you uh, this is a good religion and because that's what I understand by mm -hmm. that. They give them money to fund these and that and that no no no. Let them do what they need to do, right. but remove your hands. And let's not give religion so much uh, attention that mm -hmm. we will now have two constitutions. We have they, a lot of things seen, that we're even facing as Nigerians. Places where religion is dictating the kind of laws that should be kept mm. when the constitution is dictating something else. For instance, Sharia law in the north. Let's not even go there. Mm. Let's go to the next stop pending <laughs> issue before we touch some nerves. NSCDC re rescues suicidal woman who jumped into river in Oshun. That's the next story. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, Oshun State Command, said on Wednesday it rescued a middle-aged woman who jumped into the Bodofon Oshun River in a suicide beach in Oshogbo. A statement by the Oshun NSCDC spokesperson, ASC Adeleke Kainde, said officers of the NSCDC command pulled the woman out of the river on Tuesday after receiving a distress call that someone had jumped into the river. According to Adeleke, the search and rescue team of the command received a distress call from a member of the public. In less than 10 minutes, officers were at the scene to rescue the victim. The victim, a middle-aged woman, was res resuscitated and later taken to the hospital for medical attention. The statement revealed that the victim, after becoming conscious, explained that she came from Iragbiji to Oshogo to commit suicide by jumping into the uh, Oshun River. The PRO said the woman added that she decided to end her life because she was feeling fire burning in her body and the only way to quench the fire was to jump into Oshun River. Adeleke said the state NSCDC commandant, Agbola Sunday, commended the search and rescue team for being responsive and bringing to bear that training in disaster management. Adeleke also explained that Agbola enjoined residents to take care of their mental health, adding that his men would pay close attention to all the rivers in the state uh, to prevent people from jumping into them to commit suicide. I have a lot of questions. I mean, my first question is, how do you feel fire in your body and you have to I'm jump sure that's into metaphorical. The yeah. It could just be maybe she was paranoid or something, or maybe something was just happening in her, I don't know. I think she's it's just feeling the, of Niger the Nigerian situation right maybe. now. Maybe. You know, some of this, a lot of these people who say they want to commit suicide will tell you they are indebted to a lot of people. Exactly, that's that. exactly what I was, so, I was so hoping to hear. That's a form of fire. You know, mm. all around you, you don't feel comfortable anymore. Uh, people who are conversing, even if you're, they're not calling your name, it's a CV, it's you they're talking about. Oh, they're looking at me, know. they're seeing me, they're talking about yeah. me, yeah. So um, that also goes uh, to tell us that mental health issues should be taken more seriously because when we face some kind of conditions, it really impacts on our mental health, but we don't take it seriously here. Mm -hmm. When you go to a psychiatric hospital or just visit a, a shrink, there's that stigma, ah, this one don't they call and yes. because of that, the society looks at you differently. Mm. And the most difficult thing in life is trying to convince people who already think you are mad. Mm. That you are You're not, not. Mad. because anything you do, uh, it even makes you look. We tell you now, that's, <laughs> yes. what, that's what is happening. So, um, 
government cannot be in every river, river. at every point. So, but I will commend them. I mean, in ten in ten minutes, they were able to get there and resuscitate her. So that's like. What if she had not come for suicide tourism? You know, what <laughs> <is> suicide tourism. <laughs> she left her village and came to Oshogbo to commit suicide. <laughs> suicide tourism. I'm just. Oh my God! Me. She left her village, came to Oshogbo to commit suicide. That's suicide tourism. <laughs> wow. So what if she hadn't come to this the state center, the the state uh, capital, mm. to commit the suicide where NSCDC would? Yes. Yeah. What if it was in a in, in a small village. river you in see, her village? There wouldn't have been NSCDC there that had the training. And what if the NSCDC did not have that particular training that, because not everybody in NSCDC can swim, I'm sure. But then I think it should be but a criteria. Would, so they did well. I commend them so much. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is, but since they cannot be everywhere, we should be looking at the reasons people are committing suicide. Yeah. Suicide used to be a strange thing in Nigeria. So even here, off, like you don't Very hear strange. It here. I don't know why in the past few years everybody wants to. If you see on social media, in those days when you see someone saying, I want to kill myself, the people who will tell you, ah, I can give you my knife, I can give you a rope and all that, and make fun of it will be more. Mm. Because we knew that... It, it was a joke. It was a joke. But now, someone just as much as says, I'm and tired. And now you're even scared. I'm tired, just mm. that. And you are scared. Like, yeah, oh, somebody I reach hope. out to that person. Yeah. That's, that's the reality of the time. Just so we, we have it clear, suicide is not an option. Um, you only fail when you decide not to get back up. So no matter what is going on in your life, I understand that, you know, the economy might be a bit tough at the moment, but just look at the silver lining. There is light at the end of the tunnel and no, you should not end your life. And just in case, you know, you're going through anything, please see a therapist. We really don't talk about therapy here in Nigeria a mm. lot, but we should. And if you need to see anyone, if you need to speak to anyone, please see a therapist. Also, Take care of your mental health. We cannot stress this enough. Here on The Breakfast and here on Plus TV, we are rooting for you. And we know that, you know, you can, your life is, your life is promising. That's just what I can say. Your life is promising. So please, suicide is not an option. See somebody, speak to someone, and, you know, just have your family and friends around you that can really support you at this time. Yeah. But yes, let's go to another story. <laughs> and this says, um, Boko Haram attacks Borno's Chibok local government kills 12. Now 12 people have been killed with two others injured in a fresh Boko Haram attack on Katamawa community in Chibok local government area of Borno state. Chibok local government area is 125 kilometers from Midiguri, the Borno state capital. It is a southern Borno local government whose communities have been devastated by terrorism in the past 14 years with many abductions by the Boko Haram insurgents. The Borno state police command confirmed the attack to a, a, a television on Wednesday saying that the attack happened on Monday evening. According to the police public relations officer Nahum Dasso, two others were injured when the gunmen drove into the community with high lux vans and motorcycles in large numbers shooting sporadically. Though he did not provide further details of the attack, reports from residents indicate that the terrorists stormed the community armed with rifles shooting at mourners. The terrorists stormed the community of Gatamawa around 5 p.m. on Monday during the New Year celebration, heavily armed with AK-47 rifles, came on motorcycles and high lux vans and opened fire on mourners returning from Gatamawa. They also reportedly later attacked another Chisha community near Shikaya and killed three people and adopted a young lady burning houses and looting their foodstuffs. Monday's incident came about a month after four electric towers along the Medigiri Damaturu Highway were destroyed by terrorists 11 months after the power was restored to Medigiri after a similar attack in 2021. Over the last two years, jihadists have carried out attacks beyond their strongholds in Northeast Borneo State, the heart of the country's 14-year-long Islamic militant conflict. They have increasingly targeted farmers, loggers, herders, and fishermen, accusing them of spying and passing information to the military and militia fighting them. In 2020, Boko Haram killed 76 farmers from Zabarmari in nearby Kushogbe village, a massacre that set a new standard of brutality. According, attacks from militants in northeast Nigeria have ceased at ease rather since the height of the conflict when fighters held towns and large swaths of territory. However, they still raid rural areas, hit military bases, and ambush convoys. 
The insurgency crisis has killed 40,000 people and displaced around 2 million from their homes in the northeast since it erupted in 2009, according to the United Nations. This is really sad. Um, unfortunate, yeah. I I'm wondering how come we're still going through this over and over again. And in, in the same Chibok. Yes, has become that's like, where you know, the girls were ab yes. abdu abducted. That's where we heard the first uh, incident of uh, Boko this, Haram. this abduction that, mm -hmm. that really took us by storm. Until now, they can still walk into that place, take the people they want, kill the people they want and all that. And we're just telling ourselves lies. Uh, the, the, a governor of a northern state has come out to say that militants or bandits or whatever are uh, in charge of all, almost 60 villages. So if they are in charge of these villages collecting tax and all that, how would you tell me that they are not occupying these villages? Do they have to build houses there? Mm -hmm. Is, in where I live, the president doesn't live there, but he, I'm, I'm being influenced by him wherever mm -hmm. he is. So whoever is ruling a place is the one who is in charge. Right. So if you are in charge, you are occupying that place. Why are we not even deploying enough military personnel into these places? Do you know what? When I was much younger, I, I watched this movie, Blood Diamond, um, mm. where they're like, there's this banditry and all of that, and then they start to take over these communities. And even the little children, they recruit them, you know, giving them guns and stuff. And then, you know, they're forcing people to start uh, mining out the diamonds yeah. and, and everything. And this this feels like that all over again. Like these That's people what is are happening in the North. Yes. And people keep saying And they're it. mining and they're doing all of these things. And why is the government not doing enough and protecting the lives of Nigerians? These are Nigerian citizens. They're making us to these believe... These are people, human lives. They're making us to believe what a lot of people are saying, that the people who should be proactive are involved in whatever is happening here. Yes. Because how do you explain to me? An American was abducted in Nigeria. People came from America in a matter of days. Quickly. Which means there is available intelligence mm -hmm. that they can use. Whether they want to collaborate with another country or another expert organization or so, but there is available intelligence. Why are they not using it? For instance, the plateau. We heard that there was there were distress calls. A lot yes, of them. Yes, over twenty-seven in a few and hours. And then these people still had a field day for forty-eight hours to operate in more than one local government. And you say it's because there is no intelligence. There is intelligence. Somebody even looking a at call them. calling you and saying. We're, we're, there are unknown gunmen here, or there are bandits here, and they're coming here, they're killing us. That is already intelligence. I think, because, I mean, in America, for instance, you, call, you killed, dial 911. The drone, the drone that killed innocent citizens, where is it? They, 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 they Even the people involved the that not killed really heard very many innocent citizens. Where was that drone? Why couldn't it have been deployed? Where, where, where were the army people, the police, the navy? Whoever is responsible for 48 hours. Do you know what this playing? tells me? I feel like when they don't act on this um, intelligence and all of that that they have, you're giving power to these people. They already have power. They're now writing letters to people yes. and telling so them. So it's almost like coming. the government cannot do anything. So after all, would the government come and save you? They will not. So we can do whatever we want with your life. And that's not even the right way to go because the moment you start to give, you know how they say you don't negotiate with terrorists because in a way, when you do that, you're, you're giving the terrorists more power. Yeah. You can't give the terrorists power. You can't give bandits power because guess what? One day, they will come for you. It well, is growing. A short story. When I started out as a broadcaster, there was a time cultists came into the studio and said we must announce a list of people who were who they felt uncomfortable with in their villages these are people who were wanted by the police and all that and they published their names so they came with names of chiefs and all that and said these are the people you must announce the saving grace was that there was no light and our generator was bad. So wow. that was the first time I was clapping for, yeah. for, for power holding, taking their life, and we not having <laughs> life. So we were not transmitting. And they didn't recognize us because we were, you know, there's a difference between the person you hear on radio and the person mm -hmm. you actually see. They didn't believe those were the people who were supposed to announce it. So we told them to go and come back at 9 o'clock in the morning. They came very early at 5 when we were wow. just opening the station then. And you, guess what? When they came back at 9 o'clock, they came with a local government chairman's car. 
But at that time, our GM had already brought the policemen. They came there, arrested these people, took them. They didn't enter behind the counter at all. They didn't wow. spend five minutes in the police station mm. and they were bailed. Wow. Not even officially because the, there are no books that will say these people were held by the police and they were bailed. In five minutes, they were out of that place in a local government chairman's mm. car, a sitting oh, local government see. chairman's car of the same local government where the chiefs were saying these are the terrorists terrorizing this place and there were people dying. That's, that's dying. what they told that's what when you so hear the rumor of people are funding this will thing. give them the car to go to Imagine. a police station or a radio station to to iron out whatever was their issue, then who will talk? For you, the so that's why we can believe the rumors that you know there are politicians funding all of these terrorists. Well, let them bring out that list that they, you all, all the time they, they tell us have, if mm. we tell you the list, uh, Nigeria will burn. Let it burn, let it burn. Just give us the list. Let At this point, well, we don't want Nigeria to burn, but I mean, give us the list and, will not and burn. prosecute the people. It's not, there's one thing of bringing, there's one thing to bring the list out, there's another thing to take action on it. Let's so, start naming and shaming them, yes, and then if the prosecution them. will follow, let it follow. Let's know them that these are the people who are making Nigeria what it is. Yeah. And then maybe the shame that they will have uh, mm -hmm. to come back and stand um, uh, in front of us and mm -hmm. say, vote for me, will be so much that I will weed them out of the poverty. Yeah, and then that, that now sets a, a tone to even other people to come, and you're like, because I saw that they named and shamed this person, mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen to me. So I have to go into office and deliver. Though these people have insulation. Huh? <laughs> I guess shame. Uh, okay, well, God help us. Let's just take this break and when we return, we'll look at the papers. Uh, the papers also are loaded. Don't go away.